Day 184, Monday, June 19, Deuteronomy 2. Deuteronomy 2 1 37 NKJV. Then we turned and journeyed into the wilderness of the way of the Red Sea, as the Lord spoke to me, and we skirted Mount Seir for many days. And the Lord spoke to me, saying, You have skirted this mountain long enough, turn northward, and command the people, saying, You are about to pass through the territory of your brethren, the descendants of Esau, who live in Seir, and they will be afraid of you. Therefore watch yourselves carefully, do not meddle with them, for I will not give you any of their land, no, not so much as one footstep because I have given Mount Seir to Esau as a possession. You shall buy food from them with money, that you may eat, and you shall also buy water from them with money, that you may drink. For the Lord your God has blessed you in all the work of your hand. He knows you're trudging through this great wilderness. These forty years the Lord your God has been with you, you have lacked nothing. And when we passed beyond our brethren, the descendants of Esau who dwell in Seir, away from the road of the plain, away from Elath and Ezion Geber, we turned and passed by way of the wilderness of Moab. Then the Lord said to me, Do not harass Moab, nor contend with them in battle, for I will not give you any of their land as a possession, because I have given Ar to the descendants of Lot as a possession. The Emim had dwelt there in times past, a people as great and numerous and tall as the Anakim. They were also regarded as giants, like the Anakim, but the Moabites called them Emim. The Horites formerly dwelt in Seir, but the descendants of Esau dispossessed them and destroyed them from before them, and dwelt in their place, just as Israel did to the land of their possession which the Lord gave them, now rise and cross over the valley of the Zert. So we crossed over the valley of the Zert and the time we took to come from Kadesh Barnea until we crossed over the valley of the Zerd was thirty-eight years, until all the generation of the men of war was consumed from the midst of the camp, just as the Lord had sworn to them. For indeed the hand of the Lord was against them, to destroy them from the midst of the camp until they were consumed. So it was, when all the men of war had finally perished from among the people, that the Lord spoke to me, saying, This day you are to cross over at Ar, the boundary of Moab, and when you come near the people of Ammon, do not harass them or meddle with them, for I will not give you any of the land of the people of Ammon as a possession, because I have given it to the descendants of Lot as a possession. That was also regarded as a land of giants, giants formerly dwelt there, but the Ammonites called them Zamzimim, a people as great and numerous and tall as the Anakim. But the Lord destroyed them before them, and they dispossessed them and dwelt in their place, just as he had done for the descendants of Esau, who dwelt in Seir, when he destroyed the Horites from before them. They dispossessed them and dwelt in their place, even to this day. And the Avim, who dwelt in villages as far as Gaza, the Kaphtarim, who came from Kaphtar, destroyed them and dwelt in their place. Rise, take your journey, and cross over the river Arnon. Look, I have given into your hand Sihon the Amorite, king of Heshbon, and his land. Begin to possess it, and engage him in battle. This day I will begin to put the dread and fear of you upon the nations under the whole heaven, who shall hear the report of you, and shall tremble and be in anguish because of you. And I sent messengers from the wilderness of Ketamoth to Sihon king of Heshbon, with words of peace, saying, Let me pass through your land, I will keep strictly to the road, and I will turn neither to the right nor to the left. You shall sell me food for money, that I may eat, and give me water for money, that I may drink, only let me pass through on foot just as the descendants of Esau who dwell in Seir and the Moabites who dwell in her did for me, until I cross the Jordan to the land which the Lord our God is giving us. But Sihon king of Heshbon would not let us pass through, for the Lord your God hardened his spirit and made his heart obstinate, that he might deliver him into your hand, as it is this day, 
And the Lord said to me, See, I have begun to give Sihon and his land over to you. Begin to possess it, that you may inherit his land. Then Sihon and all his people came out against us to fight at Jahaz. And the Lord our God delivered him over to us, so we defeated him, his sons, and all his people. We took all his cities at that time, and we utterly destroyed the men, women, and little ones of every city, we left none remaining. We took only the livestock as plunder for ourselves, with the spoil of the cities which we took. From Aroar, which is on the bank of the river Arnon, and from the city that is in the ravine, as far as Gilead, there was not one city too strong for us. The Lord our God delivered all to us. Only you did not go near the land of the people of Ammon, anywhere along the river Jabbok, or to the cities of the mountains, or wherever the Lord our God had forbidden us. Daily Deep Dive We'll begin with the UCG reading plan on this chapter. In spite of the fact that the Israelites, because of their sin and subsequent punishment, had to wander in the wilderness for forty years, unable to enter the promised land, they were still being cared for and provided for by God. Verse 7. Once all the men of war had finally perished from among the people, verse 16, God gave command to the new generation to begin to conquer the land, verse 24. He made clear, however, that it was he who was in ultimate control of events, verse 25, so that no flesh would glory before him. In fact, God hardened the heart of King Sihon to provoke him into fighting against Israel, verses 30, 32, and God delivered him and his cities, as well as other specifically designated cities, into the hands of Israel, verses 33, 36, at God's command, the Israelites utterly destroyed the men, women, and little ones of every city, verse 34. Passages like these have led many readers to conclude that the God of the Old Testament was harsh and cruel, in contrast to Jesus Christ, who is thought of as gentle and meek. The fact is, however, that it was the pre-incarnate Jesus Christ himself who appeared to and gave this command to Moses. See 1 Corinthians 10:4 in our free booklet Who is God? It was He, the giver of life who created mankind at the Father's behest. Compare Hebrews 1 1-2, John 1 3, Colossians 1 16, Ephesians 3 9, who rightly ordered taking the life of certain people. It appears that in God's infinite wisdom, He decided that, rather than the children of that evil, demon-worshipping society continuing to live in misery and pain, it was better for them to die and later be resurrected to physical life in a better world in which his right way of life would be taught to everyone and enforced throughout the earth. See Revelation 25, 11-12, the eighth day, eternal life offered to all, God's holy day plan, the promise of hope for all mankind, 1999, pages 51 to 57. Of course, the prerogative to take human life belongs solely to God. Only He has the right to kill a person or command someone else to do so. End. Verse 5, God commands the people not to meddle, NKJV, with Esau's descendants. This Hebrew word means to cause strife, stir up, contend, meddle, BDB. Verse 9, the Moabites came from the family of Lot's son Moab through his first daughter. See Genesis 19:17. Ar was the city center of Moab, also called Ar of Moab in Isaiah 15:1. Verse 19, the Ammonites were the descendants of Lot's son Ben-Ami through his second daughter. See Genesis 19:38. Verses 20 and 21. It's worth noting that God works on tracks that we might not always understand. Here God says it was He who destroyed these giants for the descendants of these families He had chosen to bless.